You remember him? Oh, of yeah, you remember him. You still remember him to this day. Every day he works on the AC. His name is Larry. Where you can just pretend and get paid for it? Yes. I'm just kidding. No. Uh, all right. Proverbs chapter 11. I'm gonna I'm gonna be quick today. I'm not feeling well. Um, my voice is going. So if you'll listen, if you'll quit talking, you'll sit up straight, and we'll be done quick, so you can have time to play. Because that's what's the most important here. That's why you come to church is to play after the sermon, right? Why do you come to church? Okay, well let's learn about God. Let's see what he has to say for us. Proverbs chapter number 11. Let's start in verse number 24. Okay? Alright, let's focus in, guys. If you don't have a Bible to look out with someone, it's not time to talk. Alright? We'll waste time until it's quiet, and then I'll read. Okay, Proverbs 11, verse 24. It says, There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth. Yeah, you pay. Uh, what's his name? Y'all can go ahead and move and split up. Anybody else? Any voice? Any thoughts? 
No. Okay. I'm going to break it up here into three sections, okay? So let's look again at verse 24 and 26. Let's see what it says. It says, There is that scatter and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but attendeth the poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth more, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Does anybody see a main message in, in each of these verses? Look at, look at verse 24. It says, scatter, and it increases. But when you withhold, you miss out. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He that watereth, he that goeth out, he that giveth, shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that what? Selleth it. Or, or gets rid of it. Gives it away. And, and what I want to, to look at today, this isn't going to be anything great, Grant. I'm not going to uh, preach hard at you and rip your face off. Uh, but just, just kind of common knowledge things that a Christian should have in their life. That a Christian should desire to do. That a, that a Christian, a child of God, should know that this is what I am to do. This is what God wants me to do. This is what's going to bless my life. This is what's going to bring joy and peace in my life. We look at these first three verses. The thing I think of, uh, and what I would title this message, is, is just simply giving. Uh, giving. We look at these first three verses and it says, There is that scattered and yet increasing. And how is that possible? How, how is it possible to get rid of something and then you get more back? There is that scattered, yet increasing. What, what does a farmer do? He has little seeds. Is there anything that he can do with that seed? Can he, can he eat it or sell it? No, it's, it's not really any good until he gets rid of it and puts it in the ground. Until he scatters it away. And then here comes the increase. There is, there, there is that scatter thing that increases. But it's plain and simple. If you withhold, that's when you find poverty. And the, those that hold more than is meat than what God would have them to, those that rob God, those that keep in, they tend to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall be watered also himself. You think about what is good just for our bodies. Our bodies need water. We desire it. We can't go without water. Uh, and so when we, the Bible is telling us, when you water, you'll be watered yourself. You will get what you need. It's that simple. And then 26 says, He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. So I think about the tithes and offerings with this. He that scattereth, he that watereth, he that giveth away to his tithes and offerings, that is faithful. That is obedient. How many of you have ever heard someone preach about tithes? Preach about giving an offering. That's saying, whenever you get money, whenever you get a paycheck, how much of it belongs to the Lord? 10%. Is that a lot? Well, when you make as much money as a, an all miller, it's probably a lot, isn't it? What is that, $20 to give an offering? 10% though. It, is, that, is that a lot of money compared to your paycheck? So when, when God says, I want 10%, that's, that's what I want you to obey me, and that's what I want you to give me, you have how much left over? Anybody? Have you not reached that math yet in school? 90%. Can you, can you do what you want with 90%? Can you, can you live comfortably? Do you think God can still take care of you with 90%? And, that, and that's all he's asking. Saying, I, I want to bless you. I want you to be faithful and obedient, but you, you have to do this. I want 10% of, the, of your increase. 10%, and that's nothing. You know, this is something that, that throughout my adult life that I have struggled with, that I have, have had problems with, is, is uh, tithing. And especially through college. Because you know what? Are, are college students wealthy? Are they well off? No. They're usually poor. They usually make dumb mistakes. They usually make dumb purchases. Which I was one of them. Can you believe it? I, I thought I needed a new car. I thought I needed this nice car. And oh yeah, I can take care of it. Oh, six years of payments? That's nothing. I'll be alright. Six years. And you know what I look at now? I look at how much I paid for the car. 
through those payments than how much it was actually a sacrifice on the line. It was really tough. I made tough decisions with my money. And because of those decisions, at times, I could not tithe. I could not give like I was supposed to. I was disobedient to the Lord and to God's word, and I did not give the money like I should have. And you know what happened? When, when I withheld from the Lord, what do you think happened? What do you think I was in? What do you think I found? I found poverty. I found uh, uh, just a, a spirit of empty. Of like, I, I can't do nothing. I can't get ahead. And I'm just, I'm just so frustrated. Because I wasn't okay. It's that simple. You know what? I went through a time of just, man, I, I got to get this right. I got to get, get, get a hold of this. And there's times when I said, okay, I, I'm just, I'm going to step out on faith like God wants me to, to do. I'm going to step out on faith and I'm just going to, I'm going to obey here. I'm going to give what I should. And I started to do that. And you know what? It, it wasn't that bad. 10% wasn't, wasn't that hard. I was like, well, this is okay. I mean, I still wasn't just raking in money and seeing my savings account grow and, and all this money. You know what happened? When I was faithful, when I was obedient to what God had wanted me to do, you know, one day I went to my mailbox, and I, I'm not lying to you. I, there was a card in there with a check for $500 from one of my friends. $500. You think that was a blessing to me as a couple? Who would want $500 right now? Now, has that happened every two weeks when I tithe? Hey, look, there's that $500 check. No, because then well, I would expect it, and I would become lax in what I do. But God proved himself to me. God proved that he was faithful if I'm faithful. And God, God never fails. He never falters in that. But it's down to us if we're going to be obedient, if we're going to respect that. And, and I tell you that, don't expect that you're going to find money falling out of heaven or you're going to open your mailbox and here's going to be a huge check and, and all this just if I tithe a little, little bit. But I guarantee you, you'll see how God will take care of you. I guarantee you that you will see how you will have joy. How you will have peace. Because I've been on both sides of that. I've been on the side where I thought, I'm just going to keep my money. I, I need it. I, I can't afford to, to obey God here. And I've seen what road that leads me down. But then I've seen the road where, where uh, uh, when I was faithful, when I was obedient, when I did what I was supposed to, how God took care of me. And, and if you've done it, I know you can invest in that. As many adults in here that, that will say, through the years, I, I've... I've had to step out on faith a few times and we, we can think about offerings that come along with our mission conference. We have our faith promise offering and, and you, you, you give an amount that, that you know is not comfortable. It, it maybe stretches you a little bit. And, and, and it did that for me last year. But you think I've had to worry about my finances once? No, See. because God takes care of me. Uh, uh, just another story of uh, thinking about the tithes and, and giving an offering, giving the missions, and helping someone if I can. And you know what? I, I just moved into an apartment this year, and, and it was amazing. Uh, uh, just free stuff started coming from, from everywhere. Oh, here's a free couch. Here's, here's this. Here's this free. Yeah, just take this. Oh, no. We don't want it anymore. Don't give us any money. I tried to offer 20 bucks for the couch. Just let me give you something. No, we don't want anything. Just take it. God provides like that. He blesses you like that when you are faithful. Let's go on, verse number 27. It says, He that diligently seeketh good, procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. <clears throat> Look again at verse number 27. He that diligently seeketh good, procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. You know what I think about with this? I think about what are you doing uh, the, the first part there, point number one, would be what are we doing with our, with our money? Are we obedient in tithes and offerings? In the second part, I think, what are we doing with our time? What are you doing through work? Uh, what are you doing through what you can, the, the abilities that God has given you to, to work or to, to do something, to be active? What are you doing with your time? Because there's a promise here. He that diligently seeketh good, Procure a favor. Who do you procure a favor with when you don't do and seek good? God. He's not talking about just man or just your parents. Yeah, parents are going to be happy with it. But I, I think there's someone who I'd rather find and be in good favor with is God. The one who controls the affairs of my life. The 
one who can, can, can take from me or he can give to me. But he that diligently seeketh good. You know what that tells you right there? If you're gonna, if you're gonna do what's right, you have to diligently seek it. That means that you have to purpose in your heart. You have to work at it. You have to, you have to take advantage of moments. You have to take advantage of opportunities that God gives you. It's not just gonna drop into your lap, it's not just gonna happen to you without you doing anything, but it comes from your efforts, from your work. He that diligently seeketh good procure favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. And you, you know that's true as well. You know about most crimes, they happen at night. People are looking, lurking. People are, are seeing what they can get, are, are casing something, they're looking in someone's window, seeing what they can find, and they procure mischief. But would you rather have it on your life that I sought good things, I did good things with my life, and God has blessed me. I found favor with God. So what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with work? Are, are you, if you have a job, or someone's giving you a job to do, are you faithful in those matters? This is simple stuff, I know. But it, it bears us to remind you, to, to remind us of it. That we, we need to be reminded of these things. I need to every day. Because you know why? My old self comes back. My flesh says, no, you don't have to. I don't want to work on that. I don't want to do lesson plans. And believe me, I don't want to do lesson plans. Right? They're a pain. I only have to do it for one class. And my flesh is just saying, ah, we can put it off. But I have to diligently seek good. You know why? Because God's going to bless that. If I say, I don't need to do this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go hang out. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. What do you think I'm going to find? Mischief. I'm not going to find favor with God if I, if I just abandon what I'm supposed to do. People are to be honorable. They're to be wise with their time. Uh, uh, if, if you want to be effective, and you know, I haven't read this book, I don't know if anyone has, um, but I just hear great things about it, and I probably should read it, but uh, the, seven highly, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Has anybody ever read that? Ever heard of it? You've read it? You've read it? Is it a good book? Did it teach you things? It probably taught you about what you do with your time. Did it say anything about wasting time? <laughs> Many times you do waste time. I can remember the times in my life that I thought I needed video games. My life can't go on if I do not play video games. I'm just going to be miserable. But is that true? Or is my life better when I don't play them and I go out and do something? That's true. Now, I, I do play video games now. I play one game. I play FIFA. Soccer. And that's about it. <laughs> and I destroy Tim Piazza every time. If you know Tim Piazza, you can tell him to say, hey, I heard you speak at FIFA. <laughs> so there's time for it. But what I'm saying is, is being wise with your time. Is it something that you, that, that you waste time with? Do you look at your day? Do you look at your week and you say, I, just, I don't know what I did with my time. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I just feel like a waste. I feel incomplete. Well, you have to diligently see. You have to... To uh, be active about it. Be wise. Be honorable in what you do. Verse 28 says, He that trusted in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish, flourish as a branch. You know, I, I've worked in jobs. I've been in places where people are so dishonest. Uh, probably one of the worst jobs I had was working at Pizza Hut. Oh, it's horrible. But I saw so, so much dishonesty. So much thievery and lies go on. And God wants us to be different. God doesn't want you to be just to fit into the mold. He wants you to stand out. Because you have the opportunity not only to glorify God, but to be a, to be a witness to other people by your work ethic. Let's go on. Verse number 29. It says, He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and sin. This last one, I think, a lot of things, the, the, the past few things I talked about, they, they fall under this umbrella, but I think of, of what you're doing with your life. Are, are, what are you giving with your life? What are you doing with, with your life? And that, that comes down to your time. That comes down to your finances. And I think it, it comes down to your service. 
he has surrendered to the Lord. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, a promise from God. If you're righteous, if you do what I say you should do, it's like a tree of life. And what, is, what does he want us to do there after that? What is the command for us? Someone tell me. You that what? Anybody read? Look at, okay, let's look at verse number 30. We'll say it together. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. Now say this with me. And he that wins souls is wise. You know, we need to be wise with our money. We need to be wise with your time. You, you need to have a good work ethic. You need to be faithful and obedient to the things God wants you to do. But above all, what God wants you to do, what He wants from your life, is surrender. And that comes through your service to other people. Are, are, you, are you serving other people? Are you actively out there saying, I, I want to help someone, I want to witness to someone. I don't want to help them just to applaud me, but I, I want to help them so that they may see Christ. That they may see Him, that they may know Him. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that men his souls is wise. It's that simple. You want to be a wise person? You want to be blessed by the Lord? Here, here's the formula. Being wise with your money. Being wise with your time. Being wise with your efforts. And winning souls. Giving of your life. Giving of your time to the Lord. You know, really, what is, what is our life? Did we do anything to obtain this life? Did we do anything to obtain what we have? Or was it all given to us by God? God has blessed us with this life. You may say, well, I don't like where I live. I don't like my, my life. But God has still blessed you. God has given it to you. And now it's your choice. It's your decision what you'll do with it. And God will either bless you, or you'll find folly. You'll find mischief. You'll find heartache. You'll find a dead end. And these are, this is in the Bible. This is what God is saying to us. Saying to you, doesn't matter that you're in high school, you think I can't make music. What, what am I supposed to do with my money? I only get 10 bucks a week for allowance or whatever. Well, it's still what God's given you. It's still what has been entrusted to you, and what are you going to do? Well, I only mow lawns once a month. What's the big deal if I, if I you know, don't do a good job as I should? Well, it's still what has been given to you. But you do have that, this life that God has blessed you. And what are you going to do with it? Do you waste time? Or you say, I don't like that my, my friend is lost. I don't like that my brother or sister. I don't, I don't like that I don't know what's going to happen to them. If the Lord comes back or if the Lord uh, takes their life. I don't like what's, what's going to happen. I don't like that thought. Well, let's do so. Let's make the effort. Let's, let's put the work into it that we should and say, I, I want to make it. I want to see something happen. I'm going to be wise with what God has given me. And, and that's just something I want to encourage you in today. And I hope that, that, it's, that it's something that has spoken you and you realize that I, I'm not wise with everything I've given you. But I want to be. I want to purpose be. And, and if there's someone here that we talk about being a child of God and, and, and as a Christian, you need this Christian now. And you say, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if I'm a Christian. I don't know if I've ever done it. Well, know that, that God has sent His Son to die on the cross for your sins. And I, I came to the point where I realized that, that if, I, if I die, that I know that, that, that I'm going to be sent to a sinner's hell. That I, that, I, that I need to be saved. I, I knew I needed that. I knew I was lost. And I made the decision. And I, by faith, I trusted in Christ and asked Him to be my Savior. If you haven't done that today, if you have questions about it, I highly encourage you. Don't let it, another day go by. Don't let a moment go by without getting that settled today. Okay? Let's have every head down, every eye closed. Appreciate you listening today. You did very good. Um, but I don't want you to check out just yet. Let the Lord continue to speak to your heart and, and show you what you need to do, show you what you need to change and, and fix.